Monday 25 July 2022. In this edition of This and That and What a Fuck, I'm going to talk about a few of the things that I've seen over the weekend and I just want to mention uh, some of the skid marks that I do is uh, singular topics and I have published one on the Polish trees over the weekend and so but the this and that and what a fuck series is sometimes a little bit complicated for me to keep up to date because I try and cover the news items that is not in the mainstream news and I must also be very careful not to publish stuff that was relevant on Friday and it is now Wednesday that won't work I don't think that will be nice but in any case I'm trying my best and leave your comments tell me what you think I uh, I really appreciate feedback and that makes it possible for me to do the things that you guys like so use that uh, comments in the bottom here and like and share and subscribe the normal stuff but the likes is very important if you if you don't hit the like button that plays a major role in how the algorithm is distributing my stuff and uh, the more likes I get the more likely it is to be presented to more people so assist me with that I'm going to start today with this just a mention because I've had some questions about it what you will see on the screen now is my alter ego on Twitter. I This is the third account on Twitter after some altercations with the general trend on Twitter of what is acceptable and what not. <laughs> so this is the alter ego I have there. And uh, the name I'm using there is Skarumba. But, so if you see this, that's me. I just thought I will mention it because I've had questions on Twitter about it. They see my skid marks post and then they come back and want to know is that you? So yeah, that's me. <laughs> and if you try to follow me on Twitter, you will go through a few serious steps. You will first of all be notified that it's a dangerous profile. <laughs> but that's their opinion. I'm, I'm not going to get upset about that. I'm going to start the day with the sanctions fiasco in the EU and it is just unraveling more and more as the days go by. In this notice, EU lifts ban on supply of various aviation and industry goods and services to Russia, EU Council. They are retreating like hell. A few days back there was uh, articles appearing on the news about the fact that China has agreed to supply Russia with replacement parts for their uh, civilian aircraft. And uh, without saying it in so much word, words, it is quite obvious that the aircraft that are being affected is the Airbus and Boeing aircraft. And Airbus is an important industry for the Europeans. And the Russians have got a hell of a lot of them. So... Uh, I think it's biting. And then you've got the other side of the coin for Airbus as such. They've got a serious problem because there are metals, and apparently especially titanium, that they get from Russia. And they are now running into a situation where they can't manufacture certain parts because they don't have that, uh, they can't import the titanium. So the EU is hitting the reverse on some of their things because it's biting them. And this one is something to that is connected to the previous year one. Hungarian Finance Minister Peter Cesarto greeted by Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov, head of talks in Moscow. Budapest boosting its energy purchases said to be on the agenda. Now, that's important. Hungary, from the word go, they were totally against any sanctions against Russia on pipelined gas and oil. And then at a stage, Orban made a mistake and he agreed to the sanction of oil shipped by other means than the pipelines. And I think the Russians are a little bit itchy about that. And uh, 
seems to me they're trying to smooth things over. And then we get this one. Greece becomes the third European country after Spain and Portugal to not agree with European Commission's proposal for 15% reduction in use of natural gas. Now Hungary is also, has also said they're not going to be part of that parcel. And this is something that is going to rattle the EU. I still believe that the EU is on its last legs because there are countries that have made provision for their energy, for their, for their citizens. And now the EU wants to, first of all, force everybody to limit their usage. And secondly, they want the EU countries to redistribute their reserves so that everybody has got something. And as Orban has said, that sounds very much like communism to him. But let's see where this goes. And then there is this one. Hungary confirms intention to buy more Russian gas. After meeting Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov in Moscow on Thursday, Hungary's finance minister Peter Ceskardo confirmed Budapest's plan to boost purchases of much-needed Russian gas. Reality remains reality. Without sources from Russia, it is impossible to purchase an additional 700 million cubic meters of gas. You can dream and build castles in the air, but this is the reality, he said. And that is really true. And uh, it seems to me that the energy bomb could be the one that's going to blow the EU apart. And here is a, just, this is just a little bit of trivia to give people a better indication of what we are dealing, not we, what the EU is dealing with when it comes to gas. I'm a follower of the Duran and I sit and, uh, and I listen to a debate and the gas were discussed. And then one of the listeners or viewers made this remark. The distance between Frankfurt and Sevilla is roughly 1,800 kilometers by rail. If you have a train of gas wagons on this length, for how long will that maintain the German chemical industry? And the answer? Eight hours. I was quite surprised when I heard it. I know how far our 1,800 kilometers is. I live in a big country and I've done a lot of traveling by road. So I have got a good indication and real, realistic knowledge of what distances are. A thousand six hundred kilometers. No, a thousand eight hundred kilometers long train. Just think about it. It's impossible to bring the volumes in into the EU with any other means than by pipeline. And they screwed that one up properly. Europe is going to pay for those idiots in Brussels. And then we get to Ukraine. The Ministry of Defense of Ukraine says that Russia must abandon Crimea if it wants to continue to exist as a state. I read that and for a moment I shook my head and then I realized those guys in Kiev, they're heavy on the white powder if it wants to continue to exist as a state. <laughs> and then we get this one out of the Ukraine. Ukraine devalu devaluates its currency. Ukraine's central bank has announced devaluating its currency by 25% compared to the US dollar. Ukraine citizens who saved in their fiat currency just lost 25% of their net worth from one decision by a few bankers in suits behind closed doors. Nice. This is... This is very bad for the Ukrainians. Can you imagine you are in your 50s, 60s and you have made provision for your old age and you had your savings in there and everything has worked out. Now with all the inflation and all that crap that is slipping and sliding down onto you, you wake up one morning and 25% of your savings 
is gone. Just gone. I don't know. I don't even want to try and think about the misery that is awaiting the Ukrainian people. And then we switch over to America. And I get this. And I almost, I was tempted to make it a war of fuck. But yes, this is, this is something serious. The U.S. is set to significantly cut back the size of the army as it faces unprecedented challenges in bringing in recruits. Army cuts four size amid unprecedented battle for recruits. And you have to ask yourself a few questions. The first question is this. Why are they suffering? From the articles that I have read, this woke shit has got a big role in this fiasco here. Very big. And then, as a footnote, this, remember, this is the army that Sleepy Joe is banking on to execute the madness that he wants to unleash on China and Russia. Think about it. I don't think one plus one is making two in the White House. And then we're back in Europe. The German Foreign Ministry Baerbock in an interview with RND. If we do not get a gas turbine, then we will no longer receive gas. And then we will not be able to support Ukraine as we will be busy with popular uprising. Now, there's two things here that we must take note of. First, we will not be able to support Ukraine. <laughs> ah, I did a skip mark on it earlier. Uh, Zelensky's time is out. He's, he's actually a dead man walking. And then she says, as we will be busy with popular uprisings. Now, at least she's now willing to consider the realities of what is going to happen in Europe. This energy crisis is going to have devastating effects on the population. People are going to lose their jobs because factories will be closing down. People are going to freeze in their homes because there's no energy for heating. I see tough times, really tough times coming. And then there's this one. Well, I read it and I really smiled. South America's Mercosur trade bloc has declined a request by Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to speak at its summit. Host nation Paraguay said on Wednesday, according to the AFP news agency. Now this is followed up by another article I saw. South American trade bloc snaps Zelensky. South American Mercosur trading bloc has turned down a request from Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky to address their upcoming summit of the members Paraguay, Brazil, Uruguay and Argentina failed to agree. You can stop it here if you want to read the rest of the article. This is, this is just another sign. Zelensky's time is up. The world has had enough of it, and especially the non-West, or let's, as I see they refer to now as the Global South. I don't think it's so correct, but in any case, that's what the press wants to use, and I'll use it. The fact of the matter is, for months, Zelensky was prancing all over the world, speaking to Parliament, speaking to government, speaking at festivals, speaking everywhere on big screens and all the time singing his song of send more weapons, send more weapons, send more weapons. And as is normal, that cycle is now over. People are waking up to the realities. People are suffering high energy prices lots of problems with food and in many minds Zelensky has become now the icon for their suffering. This guy, he must be very careful. I am so sure that his number is up but I'm not going to make predictions on it. 
I have to write once and I was wrong. I thought he would be gone by the end of June. And then we get to this snippet, just an indication of how the media lies to us and how narrative is changed to push an agenda. This is 2017, how the Weather Bureau reported on the weather and you can see it's high temperatures in the 30s, an all green map and then comes June 2026 and the temperatures are lower but that map is red. Guys, they can't help themselves. They just have to lie and they do it without blinking an eye. And I am sorry to say, there are so many people that are swallowing this shit. And here's just another little snippet. Boris Johnson, UK resigned. Mario Draghi resigned. Estonia PM resigned. Macron, big defeat in Parliament. And this is for me just another boomerang of all what the West planned for Russia. Joe Biden was the big promoter of regime change in Moscow. Seems to me that plan did not work out. And that plan is getting babies in the West. And then we are at that moment. Uh, what a fuck. And today I've actually got two. Just look at this image on your screen. This is the head of nuclear waste in the Biden house. The White House, the crazy house. Hey, the, I think this is uh, something to keep in mind when you think about the fact that the military is struggling to recruit. And now we're going to get to the real warafak. This is a this is a warafak with capitals, and I got to put my glasses on for it. Ballet has been dropped from auditions at leading dance schools as staff claims its contentious nature is rooted in white. European ideas. Maybe this policy is carried out by aliens, especially in order to destroy people. After all, this is real madness. The Academy of Contemporary Dance in Leeds removed ballet from the introductory program. No, not Russophobia. It turns out that the British acad academics have found out that ballet carries the idea of white Europeans, and this goes against the course of the educational institution for the decolonization of art. What a, the world has gone crazy and there are lunatics running the show. I just have to shake my head. You know, normally I can have a lot of laughs about these what of hearts of mine, but this one this is absolutely crazy, outright crazy. From what they are saying there, me and you, if you've got a white skin, boys, we are bad shit and the world don't want us. And they want to erase every trace of us from this world. And, okay, I'm going to stop on this because I'm going to lose my temper. And while I am thinking about it, Subscribe, like, share. That likes is very important. Help me with it and try and have a nice day. I'm going to try and make your day better whenever I can, but I will also be compelled to sometimes bring you the bad news and hopefully a few lacquer what a fucks. <laughs>